Hey everybody, it's Ben here. I uh, apologize in advance for this not being a, uh, a fancy video, but today is uh, Monday, May 25th. It's uh, Memorial Day in the United States. Yesterday I had some time to work on the Vectrix, but it rained all day, so I had everything crammed into my garage, which was very tight workspace, which didn't make things any easier. Um, but I was planning on working on the BMS, so I got the cover back on right now, but uh, basically on the leaf cells there's two harnesses coming off the end of it that was originally for the BMS system. So what I did was I kept that harness and I traced all those wires and I actually marked down which wire went to which cell and I sat here with my multimeter, I traced them all back. I even made myself a little diagram of um, you know what went to which cell and all that and uh, hooked it up to a little board there and then I was going to connect that to this little doohickey that's a uh, Rev Electric Cell Pro 6 charger down there and it's computer controlled and fancy and everything got that all finally hooked up and I just got an error I don't know what I did wrong got frustrated so instead I said well what else can I play with on the cycle here so um, I took the body off the back just because I wanted to, because it was interesting. And uh, it looks looks kind of cool without the body on there, actually. Uh, it's interesting to see. I really like the trunk on the Vectrix. It's very spacious. you got a lot of room in there. And I, I was looking at it, and I noticed something, and that is, you know, the trunk is plastic. Then it's got a steel um, tubular frame around it. And then the wire harness for the lights are on there. And because this was a purpose-built vehicle, these lights are, I think it was 4 volts at 3 watts. So if I wanted to change that for something else, I can't just use like a stock 12-volt aftermarket LED car tail light from the auto parts store. I'd ha um, have to do more of a real straight-up LED thing, kind of talking a custom do-it-yourself type stuff. But the interesting thing here is... On the Vectrix, the whole box is aluminum. This whole part back here is aluminum. Um, you know, uh, swing arm's aluminum. But the steel frame here goes to the main part of the Vectrix with just this bolt, one bolt here, one bolt down here, and the same on the other side. So four bolts hold this entire trunk assembly on. So if a person wanted to get really crazy and let's say do some sort of a wild uh, high fuel economy cross country road trip sort of a thing, just pull those four bolts out, this whole thing would come off. And theoretically I could make an aerodynamic tail out of um, something like some coroplast uh, or aluminum or God knows what um, and it would be totally doable. The only thing that I did notice is that the trunk release bracket which is also what the seat mounts to are part of this tail assembly. So if I, I pulled that all off, did something different, um, I would need to make something come up from here to hold the uh, trunk assembly, to hold the seat. Um, also, I was kind of interested in uh, the charger. So in the front of the cycle, I pulled off the front just to see how things work in there. I followed... Um, uh, the anti-scab YouTube video to see how that comes apart. Took out the headlight, and here's the charger. This is the original charger from uh, the 2007 model year, 1500 watts. Um, one thing I was surprised was it was still pretty warm a couple of hours after charging with it. I did use my little Harbor Freight um, non-contact thermometer, and it was about 100 degrees Fahrenheit a couple of hours after charging. Um, I did look, and there's basically a pair of computer fans back under there. And this is a little sheet, aluminum sheet metal cover that kind of helps direct the air over the fins because this charger is sealed. So it's just some heat sink fins like this coming off. And then those fans back there blow across the fins and kind of down and out here. Um, I was also noticing that, you know, without all this fairing and everything in here, there's no reason why I couldn't put a bigger charger on here or possibly even two chargers um, in parallel. Um, I was looking at the Elcon uh, PFC 2500 and that um, allows you to charge at higher current uh, or higher power uh, by going to 240 volts. So 
uh, you know, you could do 240 volt, 15 amp charging on one of those. And a pair of those together would max out a J1772 uh, connection or uh, EVSC. So theoretically, I could have a, you know, basically get a pair of chargers, rig them to plug into something like this, and be able to recharge a 9 kilowatt battery pack in about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, which means I could drive 90 miles, uh, stop for lunch, and get a full, full charge. Another thing I'm looking at, too, uh, uh, for the kind of the battery management, or at least battery monitoring, is there's a fair amount of space under the uh, this part of the cover now uh, because I removed the fan. So I was thinking, right about here is that little bump up in the bottom of the seat. I was thinking just cutting a hole in the cover maybe just pop something like a plain electrical box in there. I could even do uh, something like one of those uh, outdoor uh, rain covers on it, have that under the seat, and then all my wire harness stuff could just kind of come up into that box. Um, it would have a cover on there. It wouldn't get rain in it or anything. Um, but then when I ever wanted to check the individual cells or anything like that, all I'd have to do is take the seat off, then I'd have access to that. I wouldn't have to take this entire battery cover off. Um, so basically I'm just kind of playing around with the Vectrix, kind of trying to figure things out, but it's a, it's a pretty cool machine. I've had a lot of fun with it so far, and uh, just wanted to give you a little update right now. Uh, see you next time.